So I think uh, we can skip some of the uh, standard background <coughs> slides. And uh, I think, obviously, I think we're all familiar with the anatomy, uh, the strongest component being the dorsal component. And that's kind of where we spend our energies. I think um, Jeff uh, described this as a spectrum of injury quite nicely. And uh, I certainly uh, love the arthroscopic management, although in, in my hands and others, uh, I think it may be challenging to do it arthroscopically. So perhaps we'll talk about uh, making an incision, evaluating the structures, and uh, move on. The real question really is, what can you re reconstruct? What should you reconstruct? And uh, we can talk about that some during this short talk, but more um, perhaps later. Uh, obviously, you want to have um, diagnosis of a scaphalunate ligament tear, which primarily is a clinical diagnosis. Uh, you certainly want to get opposite-sided uh, radiographs to make sure that widening is not a normal variant. You want to have something that's reproducible, I'm sorry, reducible, and no arthritic change. Uh, so again, you're going to get your proper history, your exam, stress x-rays are very helpful. Perhaps an MRI, you can see here, the you know, scaphalunate ligament uh, tear, but sometimes uh, your MRI is just not conclusive. Um, and certainly, I've picked one of the better slides to demonstrate. Uh, surgical repair is really all about reducing the uh, DC deformity, reducing the lunate, and reducing the scaphoid. And you want to re restore that normal uh, anatomy and kinematics. And you want to do something that prevents recurrence. So as I spoke to uh, before, I'll make a standard longitudinal incision, um, just on a tellistous tubercle, <coughs> release the third extensor compartment to excise the PIN. And uh, I, I think Dick Berger and others have described uh, a ligamentous sparing technique uh, that you can see uh, here. So making a chevron uh, is very, very helpful. Uh, I use two joysticks, uh, usually 0.062K wires are beefy enough to allow for that uh, reduction. And again, obviously the trick is to remember the lunate is going to be uh, dorsally, so when you, you want to put your K wire in a position that once you flex the lunate, the K wire still has move, uh, movement available. Uh, then generally, I think if there's sufficient ligament for repair, uh, I'll use a suture anchor de jour in the bone that is uninjured or where the ligament is avulsed from, then uh, you can, I think, augment that repair with additional collagen uh, using a, a number of capsulodesis techniques that have been described. Uh, I think they all uh, demonstrate similar uh, problems, similar uh, examples of recurrence. So again, I think in my hands, some extra collagen. And what I typically use is one slip of that uh, dorsal uh, capsule that uh, Berger described and I'll anchor that in, into the uh, lunate rather than to the radius. Uh, my concern if you anchor it into the radius, as uh, Jeff was alluding to, you, you may get stability, but the patient's not going to have very much flexion, which would make them a very unhappy patient. So th this is sort of the concept, um, capsules and, and sized. Uh, the ligament is basically anchored. Uh, I think one little pearl uh, from a technical tip is that if you're going to suture the ligament, if you find it's available for repair, it's easier to put your suture anchor sutures through the ligament before your final reduction is completed. Uh, once the scaphalunate joint is compressed and uh, reduced, it makes it that much more difficult to suture repair the ligament. Uh, and then you have it uh, sutured down. You can complete your suturing once the scaphalunate joint is reduced and stabilized uh, with either K-wire fixation or a headless screw uh, compression. Uh, again, there's been various techniques. You know, Blatt has uh, described uh, anchoring into the distal scaphoid, uh, which again prevents the scaphoid from flexing, but it, in my experience has led to uh, significant wrist stiffness. Uh, reverse Blatt, again, would be suturing that ligament uh, into the dorsal rim of the radius. Again, very effective as far as reducing the DC deformity, but it does tend to paralyze the wrist. And I've talked a little bit about this suture anchors into this area. And again, you can augment uh, the uh, capsule adhesis uh, with suture anchors in the uh, scaphoid as well as in the lunate. So a little trick is not to cut your suture um, uh, off because then you can use the needles that you use to uh, suture repair the scaphalunate ligament to augment your uh, capsule adhesis. Brunelli, I, I think in interest of time, I'll skip over, but it's certainly a surgical reconstruction uh, with the concept that this is perhaps uh, providing for a more anatomical reconstruction of the entire scaphalunate <coughs> joint. Again, with the primary repair, really we're fixing the dorsal component, and arguably we may be booking open the uh, volar side. 
So again, the more volar we can get a uh, ligamentous reconstruction, uh, the better our uh, kinematics, better our anatomy will be. And so this is sort of the rassle in closing. Uh, Mel Rosenwasser and others have popularized this. Uh, what this is, uh, stands for is reduction and association of the scaphoid and lunate. So it's really not a fusion, uh, but what you're trying to do is roughen the cartilage between the scaphoid and lunate enough to make them sticky. Uh, inherently, there will be still some residual rotation of that pseudoarthrosis, uh, but again, we're shooting for stability of the carpus to minimize the patient's complaints. You can even leave the screw in permanently. Uh, if you are one that wants to take the screw out, a little pearl is leave the screw proud on the scaphoid. It makes it much more easy to retrieve or even use a headed screw because it is, again, much more easy to uh, remove. And uh, I'm going to skip past this because this is coming up. And uh, that's my uh, six minutes. Thank you.